Hi guys, I'm doing something a little different today and I'm in front of the camera instead of just my hands. Um, I filmed a craft room tour a couple weeks ago before we had to take apart most of my stuff. Um, if you've been following along, I am in the process of uh, selling this house um, and we already purchased another house. We will be able to move sometime next month. And so I had to take apart my craft room of nine years and I just thought it'd be fun to show everything that I had and how packed it was. And then later on when I'm settled into my new house, I have a bigger room and um, I think it'll be fun to sort of film some of the process of me settling into the new room, um, how I organize things, some I'll keep the same, some differently. And I'm sure it's going to be a very, an iterative process, but I thought it'd be fun to share that. So I'm going to start with this tour today, and I actually broke it up into two parts. So they're each about an hour long. You'll want to go get a snack and sit back and relax. Um, the first one is pretty much an overview. I did go into some drawers as I, I kept rambling. I even had to edit some rambling out. Um, I did go into some drawers in the first one, but mostly it's an overview of everything in my room. And uh, then the second video, part two, will be more of just uh, concentrating on the scrap area um, because I do have other hobbies I do in this room. So. Um, I didn't go into that too much in the overview, but you'll see everything. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so I'll stop, and I'll just let you get to it. Thanks for tuning in, and um, I hope to be doing some more videos soon. Thanks. So the first thing that you notice is that I have two desks, and I, I do more than just scrapbooking. I'm also a quilter. And I also dabble in lots of other crafts. So I've got this room chock full of supplies for multiple crafting hobbies. Okay, so I better start moving around before you guys get bored. I'm going to do this as an overview first. So I'm going to move over here. I'm going to do this as an overview. And then I think I will do some mini videos going into like the drawers and all that. So I'm going to... Pan back out towards the door. I'm sorry if I go too fast. I'm really trying to go slowly. I've never done this sort of thing before. So this is an experiment for me. Okay, so let me move this way a little bit backwards so you can take in a little bit more at a time. So there is the door. And above I have a fun clock that says whatever I'm late anyways, which pretty much describes me. Um, I'm going to move to the left first. So I have a, a ironing board that I use when I um, have to, actually I don't use this one too often except if I have a lot of fabric, like big yardage of fabric to, to iron. I have a smaller one you'll see where I do most of my ironing. I do not iron clothes. Not at all. <laughs> I was through with that a long time ago. If it's if it's a little wrinkly, oh well. Things get wrinkled when you sit in the car and stuff anyway. Okay, and then here I have a, it's a shoe holder that I've repurposed just to hold kind of odds and ends. So here I'll pan back up. Uh, the top is got some like adhesive, spray adhesive and paints and I've got my glue sticks and glues, some of them. Uh, miscellaneous little bits and pieces of ribbon and elastic and I have like empty little baggies of different sizes and lots and lots of like notepads also of different sizes because I'm a, a bit of a notepad addict and down on the floor is a typewriter it's an electronic typewriter I inherited from my my husband's grandparents who passed away I call that one Big Bertha and I will show you in a little while where my other typewriter sits. Then we move to the left and I have a, this tower that is, um, well, towering fabric, but 
to the right, the rightmost side is uh, stamps, and they have mostly those have been put into CD cases. This is a CD slash DVD bookcase thing on the two sides here uh, from Ikea, and then the middle is the the main bookcase from Ikea also. I know that one's called Billy. I don't know what the ones with that hold CDs and DVDs is called. So the middle is my basically called the fabric pantry and overflow is up there. Some new stuff um, on in the little wire basket and in the other little fabric box are selvages. I do use those occasionally. They're printed with fun little things on them just like Manufacturers have started printing on scrapbooking branding strips. And then uh, this other CD holder case has flowers and buttons and brads, tags. I have down there in those little, they're little felt baskets. I have things like um, a lot of acrylic shapes and some wood veneer and some um, rubber charms. And then down there is like um, pens I think they're called the, the zig riders had them forever okay and then we move over this so this is what is what I consider my scrap space that's the main scrap space here and uh, the desk and I'll just pan down a little bit first I love 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 the Alex drawers and this space is really chock full I will say that so I've got paper uh, for eight, eight and a half by 11 paper. And um, I, I like to have my Yankee candles going when I'm in here most of the time. They're not going right now. Um, that little space, any horizontal space generally just becomes a catch all. I do have some like little pads there to note, take notes. Um, this striped fabric box has a uh, scrap paper. It's black and whites, grays, the neutrals and vellum and then in the middle drawer I have Felicity Jane and Coco Vanilla studio stuff because I think they're kind of similar aesthetic um, this fabric bin has the rest of the scraps which are um, the colors and I'll just peek in real quick I don't really want to go through all the drawers in this overall video but you can see here full of scraps and they vary in sizes. I have emptied out scraps several times while I've lived here in the past nine years. Um, this drawer here has like long branding strips that I've cut off and it's also got like my cork. They're all standing up. Again, I will do a video where I go through my drawers. Um, I love how I did this. So this desk top from Ikea is sitting on Alex drawers as you might expect but I also put another tier next to it and then these are the Michaels cubes and I put that up just kind of extends the desk a bit um, I used to just have cubes all the way up and down but I got more Alex drawers and I love 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 them um, I'll just briefly if I can remember it all because I haven't I, I meant to label everything not everything got labeled but um, I have above like sequins and um, some in homemade enamel dots um, there's felt I believe in the second drawer there's ribbon I have my cutting I think that bottom from second from the bottom is like things for my evolution die cutting machine I also have some thick threads in one of those and or like crochet and knitting thread uh, and then at the bottom I have just um, oh yes it's like the little plastic packaging and I have some old fabric that I use for when I do misting and I, I do mixed media and stuff like that okay I'll move over here a little bit so on the shelves we have a plethora of stuff there are tags um, you know like shape tags and then there's like little labels and some other printed some other not 
uh, enamel dots, more enamel dots, but those are more like the clear ones or metal stuff, that sort of thing. Um, and then here I have like journaling spots. Um, yeah, I'll just go straight across. So I have here, they're basically all puffy type stickers and that's just an empty bowl when I need a catch all. Um, all my mists. I still have the very first that I bought from Tattered Angels like in 2006 and on. And um, you know, Mr. Huey's, October Afternoon, uh, Studio Calico, and now the Heidi Swap mists. I love that stuff. Right behind are packages of those mistables from Studio Calico. Um, these are all my ephemeral packs and I do, here I'll get a little closer. I separate by some by manufacturer. So like you can see some there, October Afternoon, Kaiser Craft, Coco Middle Studio and everything in between. Some are four by six, some are five by seven, depending on how much space I needed. And then um, I also have stuff that's just by like a, a category or a theme, acetates and vellum, journaling sprouts. That was the name left over from like Jelly Bean Soup. Um, like die cut words, we've got baby and prince, little princess, which is sort of like little girl stuff. Um, critters, anything with a little animal or outdoorsy. Uh, things like clouds, I use a lot. Flowers, uh, flutter bees would be like butterflies and uh, dragonflies, that sort of thing. Um, hearts, craft squares, round, just round pieces. I tend, I use one of my punches and I cut out lots of rounds from scraps, um, either with a, a regular circle or scallop or, or some pinked ones. Um, you know, you can see all the categories there. And then uh, right back this way. So I was filming, I tried, you know, I was filming here and I covered this with some. Oh, don't fall. Okay, uh, with some parchment paper because I. Last week I broke one of my photography lights and it was the big one. We have two, one, the bulb is huge and great and I knocked it over. And, it's too crowded in here. So that was a really bummer. And so I've been using this hot light with that and it doesn't work as well. <laughs> I can say that. Um, lots of flair. And earlier in the summer, I shared a little organizing um, time lapse of f separating all my flare out. There's flare, there's more flare, more flare, and lots of um, little binder clips, some other metal, metal shapes. And this has gotten all mixed up recently, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be moving soon. <laughs> um, this, a couple of years ago when I went off, I go on yearly craft retreat with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law has started joining us. So I used to just go quilt with my mother-in-law and then we just hole up in a, in a hotel room. It's very near, near us, a town that's 15 minutes away, but it's um, along the water and it's cooler and it's just Holiday and Express and we just bring all our stuff. We bring folding tables, our chairs, our hot lights, and we set up and we just craft all weekend. We don't go anywhere except to eat. Well, long story short, I came home after one of those and my daughter had used my little P-Touch, actually it's a big P-Touch um, label maker and she put the little I love you's all over the house. There's like four or five different ones. Um, the sticker makers, and then these two galvanized bins, which I absolutely love because they fit really well in here and I wish I'd gotten more of, um, are currently holding my rotary stamps. And I have to say that I didn't even know that they made so many rotary stamps before, like, I don't know, maybe two years ago. There you go. And I saw Mercy Tiara, whom I absolutely adore here on YouTube. And she does room tour videos all the time, which I just fascinated with that's what prompted me to do one for myself um she had a set of she had some rotary stamps I, she probably only had like i don't know 10 or something and i have ever since i saw those i've basically gone crazy obtaining rotary stamps oops sorry those tons and i sort of have them divided by date and 
phrases, but then you know some of the dates have phrases too. I need a better system. I might go for that um, Tim Holtz spinny thing, um, but I'm gonna need quite a bit of those. Okay, speeding on. I got some foxy things. We, our last name's Fox. All my my sister, mother-in-law, sister-in-laws, both sister-in-laws, scrap. So. We get together once a year to celebrate our birthdays slash Mother's Day. Um, they're all kind of all at the same time, and we're always getting each other Fox stuff. We call it Foxy Lady Day. Let's see. I even have one of her labels that was on my one of my gifts. Foxy stickers. I thought I'd keep them separate so I'd know where they are. So, again, I have I transferred. Mm, most of my stamps, even the wood mounts, I took, I unmounted them and I stuck them into these CD cases. It started off when I started collecting stamps with paper tray ink and I'm sort of regretting that now. So I do have some that are still in their case and their sleeves uncut because you have to cut them apart, the, the little sheets and stuff just to get them in the CD cases. It's, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, uh, stamp pads, I went through last year and threw out so many old stamp pads. I religiously watched Jennifer McGuire's My Favorite Things stamps videos. Um, she, well, My Favorite Things, it's a whole series every, at the end of the year. All the stuff that she's discovered throughout the year that's new, things that she still loves. And, um, I started trying out different stamps because I just, all I had were some really old, those little cat's eye ones that flop off all the time. And I had some of the um, Tim Holtz distressings, but I found that the images weren't coming out great. So I expanded my collection and I love it. I am down to like things that I absolutely love and they all work well. Um, and I've learned what works well with what, you know, um, I'm sure most of you are familiar that like VersaFine has become one of my go-to's because you can get really thin line, anything like little words is great. Um, and you know, you got, I've got all the different colored stays on, which I don't use all the time, but they're there if I need them. My black was dry, so I actually need to get a new one or if they sell a reinker re for that. And then I put my pens recently here. It's not great, but is working out for me now and then in my new room I am hoping to have like a u-shape scrap area so it'd probably be this plus you know two on the sides and part of that would be for when people come to scrap but also I could spread things out and I'll have more wall space dedicated to the scrap space uh, six by six pads I actually love keeping them up here in this basket and then the overflow here um, I use these quite a bit actually. Uh, paper. My lovely two cubes of pattern paper. And I used to have them organized and then I reorganized and then I haven't tabbed everything or labeled everything, but it gives you an idea of how much paper I've got. Although, if we look sneakily under, I have the card stocks here and specialty some specialty papers that are labeled then I have more cardstock right there the white and black that I've been using a lot lately and then I have more these are all pattern papers as well they were sort of this started out it's like one of these it's a wire thing and it, sta it can stand up and it holds 12 by 12 and it started off as like here, I'll put the current stuff that I really want to use. And then it kept getting more and more. <laughs> While I'm down here, I'll show you this Felicity Jane box just has more stamps that have not gotten put away. But I want to revamp my whole stamp storage, so I haven't dealt with that. I don't know what I'm going to do with the... I, I have to stick with the CD cases, I think. I just need to fix it all up. And I, I cut apart stamp sets and made things like so this is supposed to be kind of like more, more more most used so like the some of the fonts but i also even cut things up like anything that had a fox i brought the foxes out and put them all together and stars if a set has stars this is up to a certain point i stopped doing that a couple of years ago 
but you know if it had stars I put them here now what I want to do is keep the sets as is take photos upload to Google photos and use the search function well that's something to think about for another day um oh also across here I have my humongous misty which I, I do love and I have a video from earlier in August where I was actually using that on camera it's a little unwieldy and I got extra large magnets per also per um, Jennifer McGuire suggestion so that sits here and what I'm trying to do is I was trying to carefully because I knew that this one was stuck behind this is the original Misty which I use a lot oh now you can see me <laughs> Um, so I have both of those and I love them both. I do. It is hard to use this, especially on camera, but I make it work and, um, my stamping has improved tremendously since then. Um, an old, old, old mouse pad cause I use it for the, when you have to poke holes into stuff, but I also use this, which came from something I can't remember what it's like a, a wool felt pad also for poking holes and then my mother-in-law I'm sorry I'm moving around a lot gave me my hold her old trimmers as a when I went up to Ali Edwards story camp I couldn't bring my big trimmer I don't like using these I do not like this kind of blade but I do have to figure out a good something good to use while I'm filming videos um just some miscellaneous stuff here it's a catch-all that's for washing, wiping up stamps. Just I just put a little water in there, but it's so good. Um, I do have some of these around my room. I can see there and there from uh, Target. And this one my daughter made me a few years ago, which is really cute. Um, I'm not going to go into all the drawers right now, but basically I have like embossing powders and stamping stuff and acrylic paints and um, gelatos and uh, down here is wood, uh, all full of wood veneer and this is sort of lots of stuff that still needs to get put away <laughs> the bottom there miscellaneous um, sticker sheets and stuff that I haven't figured out how to what I'm gonna do with uh, back down here I forgot to show my two of my project life cases these are the close to my heart cases medium size and then that purple one has all my old brads well most of them not the ones that have been separated out by theme but just brads metal pieces that sort of thing there's some more new fabric or I took it out for a project oh I know I was making a, a traveler's notebook and those were also other ones I was going to consider using. Here, I'll show you my travels notebook real quick. It is. I went with this polka dot or dot, not polka dot. It's bigger. And then the inside has this fabulous print, hand lettered print. Uh, I believe her name is Rad and Happy. I'll have to confirm that. Okay. I can't do that one handed. Um, this side has some, uh, all my twine and washi. And then this one's all washi. That one has some washi and twine. That's washi punches, punches, and Ali Edwards stuff. Over here we have old chipboard letters, mostly letters. Uh, fall stuff I have some recent purchases that haven't been put away old old tools and old stamps too. stamp pads sorry some of those little ones I still have well there's a tool you can't see it right now but later on I'll do a video showing that and then I don't remember what's at the bottom oh yeah like out al mini album covers and stuff it's all down there okay just briefly going back up I spray painted that little cloud shelf I love it wasn't sure how to decorate it I've changed things a few times I did have a photo where that little mini album wasn't there it was something else but yeah just some collection of cute stuff 
I just keep miscellaneous stuff in here, including gift cards. I like to have gift cards on hand to give people. In here, planner stuff. I started getting into planning at the beginning of the year. I've sort of not done much planning. Transitioning into a, a traveler's notebook, but I also just do a lot on my phone. I'm really, I'm tech, tech dependent. Uh, lots of little baggies and doilies. Um, just papers from past classes and things I need to keep. This is a box of my kids' memorabilia from when really little. One kid and the other one. And then this is like supplies like extra pens and erasers and um, adhesive and stuff like that. Up here, I have more notebook stuff back there, spiral notebooks, miscellaneous stuff. Um, I think I even have, I've kept somewhere in there is the ATG gun that I bought years ago and I hate and never use, but it's there. Um, extra photos. I think this one has photos that I kept from old prints from online services that I really don't care for because they're glossy, but I kept them there so my kids could pull out whenever they wanted to do anything. This is silhouette stuff because my silhouettes sit here. So I bought, my husband bought me my silhouette cameo, Cami. I think she's version one when it was already called silhouette cameo. Um, it was like Cyber Monday back in 2012, 11. Um, I do use her a lot. And then I was fortunate enough to last year during the summer, won the portrait here. But really, Cammie has all my love. She's just a workhorse. I've, I use the portrait sometimes when I really have to, but I've switched from the, so I do have like one of the big silhouette mats that's 24 inch wide because I have used it to cut fabric um, for applique. But then I've switched to the Cricut brand because I find that the mat's more, it's, it's, it's less squishy, you know, it's like more stable, it's thicker, harder, and I, it cuts great. So I have the little silhouette mat, but I just recently bought the silhouettes that size of the Cricut mat. And I just have to set that all up. It's, it's really tight here. Oh, I have the Epson picture mate that I bought, the PM 400. I bought that um, right around for Mother's Day. And love, love, love. And then I have the little Instax printer that was on my wish list and I also received for like birthday slash Mother's Day because my birthday's at the same week as Mother's Day. Um, okay, moving around, let's see. Uh, so I have this desk and it's my sewing desk. It's called a koala cabinet. It has a lift. So the sewing machine goes up and down. It has the opening. You switch out the flat piece. Oh, there's my my iron. Here's my iron board. This is what I usually iron on. And um, I just lift my iron up. It's got a base, and then the base is what is plugged in, and the iron does not have a cord itself. Koala cabinet is pretty good, but it's delaminating, and I need to call them to figure out what to do about that. Um, this doubles up as sewing and kind of office. My computer there. I don't like this, and in my new room, I will definitely have a separate desk. It's already in that room, kind of built in a separate desk for my computer. Um, I keep like my machine needles and scissors, and there's usually more stuff in here. Um, pin, straight pins, extra of these. Um, just these are extras that I've used over the past and I'm not currently. I made this little travel bag. Love it. This is kind of my, my fabric area. This is my sewing area. And then this is miscellaneous stuff too, like, well, lotion and 
Tic Tacs and stuff. And um, I use these gloves when I'm machine quilting. Down here I have some of some movies. I did get a portable DVD player, Blu-ray player for my computer in case I want to use that. This is where I keep thread that is thicker because I like to use the thicker thread to sew on my layout. So this is the Sulky 12 weight thread. Normal thread for sewing is 50 to 40. So 12 is the lower the number, the thicker. And it's, it's, it's a nice weight thread. I can use it for hand and machine sewing. And so I got a few packs of different colors. Yeah, that's a 12 weight. And, um, and there's a few other miscellaneous things and extra, I have extra thread. This is my Aurafil that I use for quilting. Really nice thread. Here I have, this is that, it's basically masking tape. It's a big roll to transfer things off the silhouette when you cut. I don't, it doesn't work well. I wish I hadn't gotten it and I found out about that, um, the Glad sticky stuff instead before but anyways I use it occasionally this is a lot of fuses for sewing when you do appliques and stuff I like to use the steam of steam to fuse um, some silhouette fabric fusing stuff which I've used because I have cut designs on my silhouette to use on quilts like for instance the words show no mercy there. I cut on the silhouette. Okay. That's what this is. Just sewing stuff. Sewing materials for interfacing and fusing. Like I said, this is my quilt desk. So this is all kind of quilty stuff. fabric -y stuff. Pins and whatnot. And this is all my fabric scraps. I don't have very many recent ones. They're all really old fabric scraps because I haven't been quilting. Um, my dies. So this is what I used to have more, and I got rid of all the thick steel wool dies except for a few. I still have some of these, and then I have most of my dies. They're fairly organized, but it has to be redone, and they're in these little. Again, that was from the P uh, paper tray ink days. You get these little CD cases for the CD cases and stuff. I, I wanted some of these. I have the stamps, and I need to just store them together. Um, I also have um, like the spillity kind of dies and embossing folders. And then my evolution. We are memory Car keepers evolution. Okay, so going past my sewing desk. Let's see, I have a, so when I sit there and I'm sewing, I can turn and do some quick cuts here, or I can turn the opposite way and iron. That's when I do paper piecing designs. Uh, this is my cutting station. It's counter height. Also has a cutting board. Here are all my quilting rulers and my rotary cutter and my cutters and scissors. And then uh, I just have my Cutter Pillar Pro on top, which works out really well most of the time. It's not ideal because sometimes I actually am in the middle of a sewing and a scrapbooking project. That'll change in my new room. And then I, I'm a piler. I always have piles of stuff. Before I go into the closet, I will just show you this little corner here. So I have um, my regular threads for sewing. And they're all, uh, you know, the regular weight thread. And then um, I got my Canon Pro 100, Pixma Pro 100 which is a wide format and I absolutely love down here I have papers for it so the wide 
what is it, 13 by 19, I believe, sheets, 13 by 19 sheets of both matte and semi, semi gloss or uh, luster or whatever you want to call it, satin. Those are the names that I call it. The, those are the only two um, finishes that I use is matte and semi. And then I have my Instax and some uh, Epson print ink. Here's another. Well, here's the empty one, so I can take it to recycling. Uh, regular sized photo paper, matte, semi, or satin uh, in eight and a half by 11 and in four by sixes and little scraps of them. I have grid papers. I should put my other grid papers in here too, which aren't as big, but they're, well, there's more in the closet. You can see them right there. I should just move them all here. And then, um, ink for the pro. I have a recent order which I'm looking forward to opening. Here, I've keep been keeping these extra, I got these on sale. I don't really care for this pink color, but I got them on sale and I figured, oh, I could paint them, whatever, that's never gonna happen. But anyways, I keep my, all my pocket pages and I organize them by, like, I keep them together, what what style they are, what, what configuration they are, and then I just, use the packaging to separate them from the different brands and such. So yeah. If I had the packaging, same. So I have all the way up to the big ones. have more here these are like the full size 12 by 12 and my fuse and I use and love the fuse and then here I have the smaller sized page protectors and even smaller sized page protectors and um, extra typewriter tapes I did buy I bought a manual typewriter actually it was a gift last Christmas and then I got all the different colors. Oh, I forgot to show you little blue. Okay, give me a second with that. And it's just little bits and pieces of page protector because I don't like to throw them away because you never know what you're gonna want to fuse a little pocket of, of what size. And then these little like planning, for planning layouts and stuff. I still have tons of those and I use them. I got this for, as a gift, it was on my list called the Capture. I remember hearing it from Izzy on Paper Clipping Roundtable about it, and I just can't get it to work right. It never records when I want it to. I don't know. This is expensive. I don't know what to do with it, really. I don't want to try to sell it in case it actually doesn't work. I think it works. I just can never, when I hit it, it doesn't actually hit when I think it does. I don't know. So, yeah, I have here different typewriter tapes if I can open this one handed so this is from a manual typewriter yeah there's different colors purple and red every color in the sun it's really fun to typewrite it's it's really a pain to change the ribbon but it's really fun when you can type in the colors what color is this I can't even see I think it's brown I've done the aqua a few times. No, I haven't done green yet. So here is, so this was over here, the electronic one I, I um, inherited, call, and I call it Big Bertha. And over here in this corner at the moment, oh, I forgot to do this little piece too, this little desk. Here is my manual little portable brother charger 11. Here's little blue. It's adorable. I love, love, love him. Still getting used to typing on him, and I don't type on either typewriter as often as I should. But he's a lot of fun. Just changing out the ribbon is a, it's a pain in the butt. 
but I really wanted to use it more. So that was that. And then I forgot down here my making memory memories making memories I think it is carousel with just the usual types of things. And then down here I have all my alphas. I got this at Michael's. It's a really nice square or rectangular box, very sturdy. And I have all my thickers, thicker sized alphas. And then I have a smaller, this one I got it. These might have been from Joanne or Michaels. They have like a little wire on them. So these are my smaller alphas in color. They're roughly, I think they're from the side. They were roughly in color separations. And then these on the smallest are like word type, complete words or phrases. Stickers. And they're pointing in two different directions. So yeah, this actually works out really well for me because I am a I'm big on rummaging. I don't know. This works out really well for me. I do not. I, I can't stand packaging. So that works really well. The only problem is now that I'm recording, I don't always remember what everything is. Okay. Now, sorry if I'm going too fast. I'm going to come back over here to, let's see. We have down here. All right. This Ottoman has um, an ongoing quilty project, the, the stuff for it. All my projects, all my quilty projects are ongoing. And then down here I have tons of art bin, art bin cases, and you buy the, the actual cubes for the art bins, that, that, that's that brand. This isn't like the Jet Max cubes or anything. And those are full of projects, things I've separated things out for. For instance, I believe that one's my Disney album supplies and my UK trip album supply. One of the cases for the UK trip, I think both of those. And one has things for Fourth of July layouts and one has Halloween stuff. Okay, that's one of my... UK trips and so is this one so maybe the other ones are Halloween yep Halloween stuff Halloween stuff yeah this is the 4th of July kind of stuff and uh, I even have an empty one I can't believe that it's because when I went to story camp I just dumped stuff out into something else uh, and then this is like my kids memorabilia from school and it is sorely outdated. I have not done anything for filing away their memorabilia for years and I have bins to sort through. That'll be a project for another day. Okay, um, my design wall which is made out of foam core wrapped in felt and it's as old as I've been quilting. My husband did this. He made the rails to screw it on. And um, my current project, really cute, my closet. I have to say, if you ever are doing a craft room closet, I really recommend two things. These Alpha System, the, the Alpha System for doing it, because they all are in like a track. And you can move things around. I've never moved them around, but you have open shelving, closed shelving, and then um, the depths are different. Like those are really deep because I wanted to be able to access them. And that's big stuff. Lots of fabric, huge fabric pieces and batting and old clothes that I save in case I'm going to use them on like an upcycled craft project. Um, backings for quilts. I have... Memorabilia, 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 memorabilia. I really need to concentrate, consolidate all. Um, the last of whatever books I have. Uh, this is all for my P-Touch 
labels. A uh, few projects in here that I never finished. We were doing like thankful buckets and stuff. An old mini that I made my daughter that w one of the pages is falling apart and I have to redo. So things like that. Um, cards, card making stuff, and some finished cards I've already got. Memorabilia. My cinch, which, oh, I hope my finger wasn't on the covering there. My cinch, which is not used often, but when I do use it, I absolutely love it. My P Touch. Back here is my laminator that I got from Costco, like when my kids were really little. So, the two things I'd recommend in a craft closet are this Alpha system because I have this drawer rack of drawers here, and and lighting. We had that light put in specifically so when you you can turn it on and see everything. Um, old papers, PSB binders, paper sticker binder, and this isn't. This is like obsolete in terms of marking them, but it's still on there from the the days when all I had were these <laughs> and my cropper hopper roller. Um, tons of stuff here. Uh, miscellaneous stuff I never put away. Cinch stuff. My Project Life albums that are in progress. One's flipped. They're all there. I think one of these is actually my, it just holds like unfinished pages. Okay, so I can't really move this out one-handed, and I didn't really think this through, but so there's the all the drawers, and some of them are empty because they had fabric that we're using to wrap breakables as we move. This is a basket that's about to fall with, I wanted it portable because I was, I've been working on my travel albums, my UK albums. Underneath, I have just an empty box. Well, this is empty, but down here, oh my god, I don't even know what this is. This probably, probably oh, it's something I was going to return, and then it wasn't worth returning. Um, the color was off on one of the the buy the what do you call it? Simple Stories planners. I got the clove color, and it looks more like an olive, and I was disappointed, but. I was going to have to pay shipping back and it wasn't really worth it. Here are the clear storage cases for rubber stamps. Those are the DVD cases that I bought so I could transfer everything out of the CD cases because the DVD cases are a plastic that won't break as easily and they're bigger. Uh, this is this is one of my Rascogs. I have a couple but my kids use them and this has all my Christmas supplies. They're still packed up from when I took them to a crop like this two years ago. What I do is I'll pull the whole thing out, do a few layouts, and then put everything back in. So I have separated the theme. Anything Christmas themed is here, no matter what type of product it is. And they're pretty well labeled, too. Can't really show you. You can see I have some labels on some of those things. And... Um, the cases so these are all Christmas stuff um, winding down here some stuff for mailing and this is a lot of sewing stuff starch and things for printing on fabric lots of little projects that I haven't gotten around to they're little Things like, like that, just cute stuff. Some in progress projects, quilt tops that aren't done. Of uh, printing fabrics and these big grid, extra grid paper. This is like my husband's art stuff from when he was in college. Um, down here, okay, so you can't see everything, but school. For school scrapbooking, all these things in this shelf are all school related in terms of product. And then I have 
down there, which you cannot see, I have the third close to my heart case that has Project Life stuff that's the cream based. I took them all out of, I separated the cream based and I haven't been using them so I keep them down there. And there's like the cover to my sewing machines there and I have like empty bags that I use for things. That's about that. I just remembered one more thing that I did not show you guys. Oh, I have photography stuff. The other one's lamp's broken. It's really crowded in here with those photography lights because we've got the little umbrellas that do the... You, you put them on and one reflects and the other one diffuses and it's they take up a lot of space. But one thing I forgot to show... Move this out of the way. I've got to make sure that this the casters aren't locked. Okay. So this this koala table closes. Let's see, that's in the way right now, but it, it can close up. It actually has a leaf that comes up on the back, which I've only had to. When I quilted a couple big quilts, I moved this all out and I've lifted that up and there's like, you end up with like this much space to squeeze through, you know, like squeeze through when this is all this way. Um, but down here, I have another Alpha system. I don't remember what they call these. They're like a freestanding drawer thing. I need to get the casters for this one. But I have silhouette stuff. Like this is just a stack that I'm like, what was I thinking? But I can use the back side to do test. I can just use it for test cutting pieces. And mats and watercolor paper if I want to do good eye cuts with water paper and and foam sheets and, and just other things like that like wood paper wood veneer paper and chipboard I said I wasn't gonna be going through drawers wasn't I and felt and this is like all adhesives okay so this has been long enough I am going to stop talking now